right, welcome to another edition of North Shore Journal. I'm your host, Walt Kosmowski, and I'd like to in, uh, welcome my two guests today, Nathan and Kari Gray. Welcome, folks. Thanks Thank so you. much for having us. Yes, and uh, we are going to be talking about a very interesting uh, topic today. Uh, but by way of introduction, let me let me say that um, uh, Nathan is a contractor out of Newberry, uh, and your company is called House Factory. Is that correct? Yes. Right. And and uh, I, you have a unique or part of your building is you use recycle recycled materials to actually as building materials in some of uh, your projects, right? Correct. Um, and uh, we'll talk about that in a little bit, but but the thing that we really want to concentrate on today is the fact that you are championing here in the North Shore this concept, which is really a kind of a global concept around the world. It's been getting a lot of traction of using non-recyclable plastic material to create building materials. Is that correct? Did I yes. say that correct? Right. Okay. So we'll talk about that in a second. But let, let's just, uh, so our, our, our viewers are, are familiar with, with, with what you do and your experience, tell us a little bit about House Factory and how that got started and kind of what you do in, 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 your, in, in, in House Factory. What? Yep. Yes, I'm the founder of House Factory Foundation, and though I've been a contractor for the last 10 or 11 years, I've decided to open up a nonprofit that focuses on affordable, sustainable, innovative building. And the EcoBrick is a flagship product, building product of our, our company. Yeah. And now you, you actually uh, uh, build homes or you build, build sections of homes with these recycled materials or what? what uh... Yeah, we build the whole entire home and we use EcoBrick as a building product of it. It's a portion of the home, but um, one of our greatest social valued product. Okay. So now that you've mentioned it, it's called Eco Brick, and we have one here um, uh, that you brought with you. And uh, why don't you hold that yeah. up and uh, show our audience what uh, what that looks like. So describe what, what we're looking at there. Just kind of hold that up in front yeah. of you so our cameraman can uh, z uh, zoom in on that. And tell our audience what, what we're looking at there. It looks like a plastic bottle. It's from, from water bottle. Yep, so it's a 16-ounce water bottle packed tightly with non-recyclable soft plastics. Um, we're using 16 to 20-ounce bottles, uh, 7 inches to 8 and a half inches tall, and we want to compact this soft, dry, clean plastic um, tightly to be able to get at least 5 ounces of weight. So when that 5 ounces of weight gives it a, a, good, um, a good hard, yeah. compact... Um, Brick, like. Brick, yeah, kind of material. <laughs> so, so uh, non-recyclable plastic. So the stuff I, I can't really see what's in there. It's kind of different colors. Yeah. So tell us what would constitute a, a non-recyclable plastic. And we have in this particular one. There's chip bags. There's some um, uh, Ziploc bags. Uh, a lot of packaging for vegetables and for packaging for um, any kind of materials you'd buy at a hardware store or pick up at Walmart or. Um, there's some clear plastic bags in here, um, so many different types okay, of plastics. And, the, and those are non-recyclable, yep. but, but the bottle itself is a recyclable, right? You're putting it into, that is a recyclable yep. because that's what I throw out in my recycle bin when I put out my trash on, on Wednesday morning. Yeah, and, and we hope that all of our recycling is getting to the proper space. But I, I, Unfortunately, reading so many articles, it feels like there's a, a sense false of security when we throw it inside that recycling bin. So this is a way to, to steward the plastic completely and to know where it's going to, to put the effort into properly disposing of your recyclables. Yeah. Now, how did this how did this idea get started? I mean, you didn't you didn't create this idea. This no. this is kind of a worldwide. Mm -hmm. yeah. In fact, there's a, there's a thing called the global Echo Brick Alliance, if people want to look that up on, on, on the internet. Yeah. Uh, but so how, how did this develop? Where did this, where did this start, this whole idea? Yeah, the idea came up uh, during family vacation time with my brother-in-law who is, uh, lives in the UK and he has done a lot of global travels and he was telling me about the Eco Brick and talking about stuffing plastic inside the water bottle. And so I had to give it a shot. 
as I was stuffing the plastic in there, just thinking about um, it's incredible how much plastic we actually use on a, on a daily basis. So we were making one of these every week and, and the amount of plastics that, that were there coming led to a lot more of our awareness of the actual plastics. And um, so we involved two middle schools at first. I, I gave a call to Thurgood Marshall Middle School uh, principal and, and spoke with Molly and mentioned the idea and, and she was on board with it right away. She was very interested in the project. And so she gave us the go-ahead to be able to introduce it to her students in the school. And we did that as well in the Newberry Middle School. And Principal Yando was was really excited to use the eco brick in her maker space and have the kids build the, the eco bricks inside mm -hmm. of her space. And, and from there, it just have grown to so many other schools and people contacting all the time, wanting their their schools and their students to to be yeah. involved. Well, that's a good, good point now, and, and we have a few images that I want to uh, ask our control room to put up. And as, as we put up these images, Nathan and, and Kari, uh, if you'd like, uh, just comment on what we're going to be looking at here. So I'll, I'll ask Matt to put up the first uh, image. So what are we looking at here, folks? Well, this, this, I'll take this one, actually. It's um, the eco bricks are aligned in, it's kind of the beginning phases of, of the wall panel that's going to be constructed. So those eco bricks that are all nice and tight next to each other will continue on that four by eight sheet of plywood and spray foam will be sprayed in between the gaps of those. Of those um, okay, so these, these are, are, okay, so let's, let's, let's uh, see the next image. So that's the completed, and then, uh, now what are we looking at here? Yeah, this is a collection point uh, in Beverly that people can put their completed eco bricks in as long as it met the standards I spoke of earlier. You can drop them off there at 36 Foster Street in Beverly. So that's located now. That is that out by the airport? Is that where? That's at the Garden School. We rent a space there as well. Okay. And, and now, how, do, how would people know if they have five out? Would they have, have to weigh the? Weigh it. Yep. They'd have to weigh it. Okay. Yeah, yeah. Right. We really need it to be of that standard. We need to have a, a standard for it. Okay. And, and, and so that's there's standard. a, it looks like there's something in, in the middle there, uh, and that's where they would deposit the, the yeah, echo bricks? Yeah, there's a trash barrel within that, within okay. that reclaimed wood structure, and there's um, some more information on that. Um, laminated paper there that talks more about the eco brick. And, and how often are those bricks uh, picked up? Daily. Daily. And where do they go? Um, right to the space that we're renting up the hill. And then the picture beforehand was the, pan the, the production of the panel. So we'll have students and volunteers and interns putting together the, 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 panels, the panels that will then be used inside the houses. Okay. And let's look, take a look at the next image. And that is the two of you with your son. And who's that? Hayden. Hayden. Hayden is our three and a half year old. And he really was the Yeah. The and that, and that picture was taken, looks like, along the waterfront somewhere here locally. That's, yeah, that's at home. This was our neighbor's house. We've been feeding their chickens that week. Okay. Hayden was feeding their chickens. Okay. And so they allowed us to use their beautiful dock for the photo okay. because it was appropriate being on the water. And uh, Caden has a has an uh, eco brick, okay. and, and the two of you are holding up some eco bricks. Okay. So let's take a look at the next uh, image, uh, Matt, if we could. So there there are finished uh, eco bricks, very much like the one that, that you're holding in your hand. Okay. Let's take a look at the next image. And now, what are we looking at here? Yes, yeah, the Newberry Middle School students putting together their eco bricks in the maker space. Um, just students learning how to make them. This is one of the first times that um, we introduced it to the students, and it was, it's incredible watching them stuff the plastics in and getting excited about the simple yet effective solution. And um, the idea started running through their heads. And uh, I, I remember <laughs> one of these students actually mentioned um, uh, how they could build a table out of them, or they could build a collection point for all the other eco bricks. We could make it out of eco bricks and it's just great to see their minds start to think of, of plastic waste as being something that could actually be of value. Mm -hmm. Okay, and uh, next image please. And so here we are again, uh, I guess they're starting to, they're filling them up and, and what's happening, they're starting to stack them up. Yeah. This is in Beverly and this is the... Which, first night? The I think it's the first first night. night, yeah. First yeah. night and it was in the Utilitarian Church uh, on Cabot Street, and we had a space there that we were teaching people how to make eco bricks, and, and there was also a Curious Creature event 
uh, there as well, and I was just fascinated by the, the kids that wanted to stay and stuff the plastic and inside stuff bottles instead of go see the animals. There's yeah. something visceral or something. It was yeah. amazing. Yeah, about, they just didn't want to go. Yeah. And yeah. they were starting to answer questions, so adults would come in and you know keep and asking, what is this? Would, would and the kids would start to yeah. be the see, spokes. What, what a great learning experience, huh? Yeah. yeah. And uh, have we got some more here, uh, Matt? Another image? Okay, and uh, looks like uh, this is... If, if, tell us what's what we're looking at here. Looks like the eco bricks have been. You talked about something about foaming something around yep. the eco bricks. Okay. Yeah, this is at Lynn City Hall, uh, and this was a meeting that we had with the city to bring the eco bricks to the entire city of Lynn. Uh, we're continuing our conversations with them. Brian LaPierre, as councilor at large, has been been a great asset to that. I'm very thankful for his, his support. Mm -hmm. And um, these, this is an example of what the eco bricks will look like once they're in their panels. Um, there is a larger water bottle there. We're not using those sizes, but mm -hmm. we did use these as an example. Uh, and it's a spray foam sprayed in between, and, and that's the what's going to sit in between the exterior walls, which are the structure, and this will be on the interior wall where we're going to steward the plastic for hundreds of years as well as um, use it as uh, insulation. Okay, so there are uh, about how many on uh, how many bottles are are in how many eco bricks are in that uh, in that configuration? There? Um, well, I could count them, but that's Eight, ten, we're going to use twelve thousand of these bottles. No, but I mean, right that one, one, that one, one two, uh, three, four, five, five, and about seventeen bottles, and in that weighs eleven pounds. That larger one. Okay, it's so eleven that's, pounds. Of so that's with yeah. the foam and everything else. It weighs about with 11. the foam, which is very lightweight. It's yeah. mostly plastic. There. Yeah. Okay, very good. And do we have another image, uh, Matt? And looks like this is this is the raw material that go in. Looks like this is packaging material. What are we? What are yeah, we yeah. It's all the collect. They've collected this at their school. This is Third Good Marshall Middle School in Lynn, and these are the students. One of the first students that took on the project, mm -hmm. and they're collecting all the material, cleaning and drying it, and then starting the process of of stuffing it inside the bottles. So and they, that whole table could easily fill one eco brick. Yeah. Really? Well, yeah. I think there's, yeah. there's four in this one. I was think that's there? the next picture. Well, that was like our table. Yeah. Filled one. Yeah, it's so, amazing how much plastic actually fits inside. <laughs> so the, the kids would actually brought this in, like I see potato chip, what looks that's like from the waste chip. of the school. Yeah. Yeah. So instead yeah, of throwing candy. it away and yeah. putting it in the trash barrel. So and what, do you, what do you do about the, about the uh, potato chip crumbs in grease and stuff? You have to clean it. It has to be clean. You can't have any organic material in here. Yeah. It's going to break down faster. So how well does that have to be cleaned? I mean, uh, clean yeah. and dry. Yeah, pretty well. I mean, you don't have to go crazy with soap and disinfectant or anything, but you can just clean it under running water and, and get it, get that. Just like you clean like, like, like dishes? Like you, yeah, you or you would, the cleaning that you would put into your regular recycling bin, you don't want to have any food waste on there. Uh -huh. It's the same, the same idea. Okay. And one more image. Yeah. Okay, so here we have the students <laughs> proudly... Uh, looking at the five, uh, so I imagine oh, that's what they filled up. That's they, what they filled up. That's yeah. that. That's all that stuff we saw yeah, on the table clean. before ended yeah. up in these five uh, yeah. uh, eco bricks. Okay. Now, now tell us a little bit more about the, you're forming relationships with schools and other organizations to kind of do this this kind of work. Tell us tell us about that and how's that going? Yeah, it's going really well. It's the uh, the interest in the project is is great. The, the get a lot of call from teachers coming in. Are looking to bring the eco bricks to their classroom to be able to use it as a education and awareness tool for the amount of plastics that we use on a daily basis. Um, so they're they're looking to have me usually. <clears throat> typically, I'll, I'll go to the school, have a eco brick building day, teach the entire school um, in different segments on how to actually do it, and then the teachers that are the most passionate and the students that are most passionate about the project run from it from there. With, yeah, and then they. They make the eco bricks, and then we we organize a, a collection day, and yeah. And, uh, yeah, they sign them and write things on them, and kind of put their own little yeah thing into it. Now let me ask you: Is this is the goal here? Is this is this to teach kids like a cleanup effort, or is this is this really uh, would this be a commercially viable venture to actually because it looks like it's a very labor intensive process. Uh, and and uh, it, it, to to take it from you know kids doing it on a on a you know in school on a on a tabletop to building up enough material here so that you could use it commercially in in, in building homes and other structures. Uh, th there is is that do you see like a future in that actually happening? I do I do I see I see the creation of jobs. 
I yeah. definitely see the creation of jobs, um, uh, low-skilled jobs, and uh, the collection from every household uh, using a recycling bin, just like we do now, to collecting the soft plastic waste. Uh, we have interns coming to help to create these bottles, and um, it's, I don't know, what else do you have? Yeah. Okay. This is where, well, it does go further. So in addition to the eco bricks themselves, which obviously, if you were doing this on a family, household, neighborhood basis, you're, you're collecting an extraordinary amount of the plastics that can't be recycled. That's for sure, yeah. Creating awareness in that family. Just myself doing it, it was mind-boggling how much how plastic much when you become aware. Right, yeah. Then you start to notice how much is around you. Just take a drive today. Yeah. And look everywhere. And if you stop and look, the microplastics we talked about, the tiny pieces of plastics breaking down but never going away are there. But to add to what you just said or to answer your question, this is not the complete end result. There's a machine um, that we've started to incorporate and will continue from precious plastics. So yeah. we can take it from there. We can, we can use machines as well. But it, the idea is to be able to have it as an awareness tool and to be able to stuff it and to do the label and intensity of it and to take the 30 minutes or an hour to, to make it and, and to properly dispose of your plastic is kind of the, the value behind it, is the education. Yeah, it certainly is an it. educational uh, yeah. uh, thing for, for the students. It, and, and, but I mean, something like that, though, if, if, you, if you need it to be five ounces, but some people may be weighing it accurately, other people not. Right. Uh, I mean, there's a there's a certain inconsistency. I mean, I, that wouldn't pass like building codes or like for a livable housing, would it? Or how, yeah, how well, could you do it? There's uh, ecobricks.org. Um, been working with them to kind of uh, talk about our different projects and talk about the ecobrick in general. And they've created a a um, unified system where they would you would make your eco brick, you would weigh it, you would take a picture of it on the scale. Um, and then there would be trainers throughout the world that would look at the pictures and make sure that it was of the quality that, that they're looking for. So um, there's definitely a way to make it more of a, um, a consistent quality. Right, yeah. You know, through, yeah, they through verify our, them. The internet system. and yeah. such. So, yeah, I like that system. Now, when you say so. they, now who is they that verifies them? Uh, yeah, it's a, the yeah. EcoBrick Global Alliance. They have okay, so, that do. Yeah. so, so you, there's a so you, uh, the effort that you're doing here on the North Shore with the schools is is part of a global, huge global effort. And yeah. I, I do oh, yeah. invite uh, our viewers. It's called the Global EcoBrick Alliance, and they have a website, and there's a lot of very valuable uh, information there. Yeah, yeah, we Skype. We're just doing some Skype phone calls with, uh, I think there's four different countries. I was talking to a guy from. Colombia and Indonesia, and there was someone in Canada, South Africa, um, and the UK as well. Mm -hmm. So it's great to be able to do that global kind of connection yeah. and talk yeah. about yeah. the. Now, about so so there are other people, just like you have that collection site in Beverly, and people are dropping off their mm -hmm. eco bricks there. There are these collection sites. This is kind of a model that they're that they're using worldwide. Yeah, there's not too many of them. Uh, yeah, worldwide. Yeah, in yeah. the in the states, there's. There is some people like Santa Fe Up, Upcycle is, is a great company in New Mexico that's working with EcoBricks. Um, um, so they have some collection points. I don't know if they're taking on any projects right now, but uh, there is globally there's, there's a lot more. There's yeah. these trainers who have been trained how to make the EcoBricks and to, to train other people how to do it, uh, kind of a trainer of trainers, and they, they have different projects going on. Um, I'm not aware of anyone that's using it as as an insulation um, component, they're being used with um, with mortar and stucco and um, adobe. Adobe mortar is, is a big mm -hmm. one that they're using as well. Or it's just like like when you uh, when Pop. when Pop. when you pick up those eco bricks from that station in Beverly, mm -hmm. and they come to your location. Yeah. So then, so walk us through what what do you what do you do with those, and how do you how do you and we saw the we saw the like the seventeen eco brick. Mm -hmm. Configuration where it's actually like a like like a a, a brick or or whatever you want to call it, yeah. uh, a concrete brick, and and so how how would you are you actually using that in building projects right now? Yep, our first our first eco brick home will be in Newberry. We're going to use twelve thousand of these eco bricks, which is about four thousand pounds of plastic. 
Okay. And so the when we pick them up from that collection point, we're bringing them inside of our shop, and we're lining them all up using the spray foam, creating these four feet by eight feet tall panels the size of a piece of plywood, and then that will be shipped to the site where the construction's being done uh, in Newberry, in this case, okay. for our first one. So in lieu of doing like a framing, two by four framing with... We're using with con recycled concrete walls for this yeah. particular project. And so this would be, so the wall would be essentially about the, the height of that bottle. The thick. thickness, we lay them on the sides. Yeah, so, them, so it'd be yeah, that, that... This would be our insulation value. So the concrete will be on one side and then the whole entire panel will be on the other side and this will be exposed on the inside. So from there, as we start to move into occupied dwellings, when cities, um, when we open that conversation with cities for occupied dwellings, then we can use a fire rated sheetrock on there that could screw right into these bottles and, and create that, yep. that fire barrier. Right. So right now you're trying to collect enough uh, eco bricks to build that house. <laughs> yeah, in, in twelve thousand of them. Yeah. And how many do you have now? <laughs> uh, about three hundred or so. Yeah. Three hundred. Yeah. So we have more out there. I, I need to collect some more, but make your yeah, we need them. Please help us to, to make these at home. <laughs> you have the plastic. <laughs> so uh, and and uh, uh, so you you have a piece of land there. Now is this house already sold? Has somebody already put their hand up and say I want to buy this house, or is it build it first? Yeah. Well, no, I mean, but it's on but, our property. No, we, we, it, yeah. we, weren't we, to, we weren't able to find anyone to give up their land to put a yeah. plastic oh, water bottle okay. uh, home on, so we did it on our own property. So it's, it's on land that, that you own, and, yeah. you'll, and you'll put it up for sale after uh, after it's done. <laughs> no, yes? no, no, no. no? We'll, we'll use it as a, a demonstration. We want yeah. to be able like to show it off. It's it's gonna, yeah, it's yeah. our teaching. Uh, yeah. Okay. Teaching yeah. grounds. Okay. That's well, what that, our That's wonderful. And and so schools and other organizations, or even me as an individual, I could make these yes. and and take my potato chip bags and, and anything else I have or or those things that I, I when I buy something at Home Depot <laughs> I'm terrible I can't the, the way they package things these days Ridiculous. I have to use yeah. scissors <laughs> and, a, and a wrench and, and a pliers <laughs> yep. to open things that I, that I continue buy. cutting They're those so down to smaller there. pieces so they'll fit inside the bottle and, that, and, and that's the idea is to in. get them to so they obviously have to go through the neck mm -hmm. of the yeah. Of, yeah. of the bottle. Yeah, and the harder you plastics, you really got to cut, cut down smaller. And, yeah, and you, you combined it with the softer plastics, and then that because creates Because you bind. don't want too many voids in there, right? You don't want any voids. Yeah. So how, so. how did you come up with the five ounces? Where, where, where that, did you calculate that that's what... Just uh, because, talking to everyone else globally, what, really? what they do, um, it's... Because the density of, of the materials varies, right? I mean... Yeah, uh, it does, and, and, and it's hard because if you use um, styrofoam, a styrofoam is a really bad material for our environment, so I, I would encourage people to use some styrofoam as well. Um, and that definitely brings down the, the weight of the, pro, of, of the eco brick, but it's, if five ounces is, is uh, the lower end. You can get these up to eight ounces, nine ounces, uh, depending on what type of water yeah, what, bottle what you're using. You put into the, yeah, yeah so five see. ounces is, is, is definitely on the lower end. I, I kept yeah. it, I'm keeping it a lower number so kids can make their own, um, I hate to return them to say, I need you to make it a little yeah, bit harder, stuff, but, stuff more yeah, we'll but stuff we don't have the resources there. to be able to to fix all of them, and I, I, we just can't end up with the bad eco bricks. Cause so you're, are you are you like coordinating and liaising with these other uh, entities around the world to come up with what, uh, you know, it, it, do people in Japan or Australia or South Africa, as you say, are they also using the five ounce Standard well, or? Yeah, the EcoBrick Global Alliance, they're, they're using the metric system, so we had to kind of do some conversions there, but, but, it's, but it's about but five it's ounces. The, yeah, the I think if their standard, uh, I think, would be six ounces or 5.9 ounces or so, um, but we went with the five ounces. Yeah. They, the way that we're using them, too, it's yeah. not as important. In Indonesia, for example, they can use these things as different structures because they don't have the material supply or the finances that we do over here, so yeah. they're using it in a much more diverse Manner already. They're building yeah. tables out of them yeah. and chairs out of them and couches out of them. And, yeah. Um, so they really want their their eco bricks to be solid, but we're going to be using the spray foam that we're really expanding on it. And it's, mm -hmm. it's all experimental. Well, my, well, let me ask you a question. My environmental persona is saying, I'm looking at this, and if you build a house or a wall or something out of this, essentially those are non recyclable uh, materials. And, and sometime in the future, that house is either going to be torn down or whatever, and then you still have the disposal yeah. problem. So yeah. rationalize so we, that. We thought of that as well. And yeah. um, the, we plan on putting it in a trust, um, the, the land around the eco brick house, as well as the house, and, and to explain 
the proper disposal of the eco bricks once they're done. These are going to last inevitably. Inevitably, um, plastics plastic lasts for 400 years. Uh, yeah. This building, it's like I said, it's out of recycled concrete, so it's a really solid structure. So it'll be there for hundreds of years. We're hoping by the time that that structure needs to be renovated or torn down, um, there's a, another recycling process to be able to, to do these. But you can actually just pull it right out of the spray foam and reuse it again, and that's the idea of it. And that's what they're doing in a lot of other countries. When you say take they it out of the spray again. foam? Yeah, you, it could, if you didn't want the whole panel of there, yeah. or the panel was breaking down, or you need to replace it, you could remove oh, the see. eco brick, and then you still have okay. the eco brick. And, and yeah. use it oh, for I the see. same okay. purpose. Yeah, but we want to put it, we want to word it correctly and get it in that trust to be able to, to if we do sell the house down the line or someone else is in charge of it. We, we want to make sure that it is properly yeah. disposed of once properly. it's done. As well as the rest of the yeah. area. Now, now, do you envision in the future that there will be houses uh, uh, kind of built not only here but around the country that will be will be using e yeah. e eco, eco bricks? Yeah, yeah, I love it. It's just one country. one piece of it, of the, the total house. But yeah, I'd love to be able to bring this as a, a solution for other cities and other, other houses. Yeah. Now, uh, I want to put up, if people are uh, interested in getting more information or if they want to start making their own eco bricks, uh, we have a couple of websites that we want to put up. Uh, let's take a look at, um, at that. And this is uh, www.ecobrickus, and that's your... It's our project. That's your project, okay. Uh, and uh, so if they want to... Um, uh, if they want to contact you, they can they can send you in, um, or contact you through. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. There's, there's information on how to contact us, and we'll get you started with the process. And there's some videos on there as well to teach you how to build the eco brick. Um, some more description. The description of the the size of the bottles and the weight and such is on there as well. Yeah. And now you're also actively looking for schools and other organizations there that deal with children where you can actually teach the kids and get them to be environmentally conscious and 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 and, and show them that you know these, these plastics these these uh, uh, carry totes and the plastic totes and everything and that has to be has to be uh, recycled or, 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 or gotten rid of somehow so you're teaching them an object lesson in that uh, mm -hmm. in that as well yeah yeah we have exciting. we have we have Sunny the Sea Turtle, who was created by Asia Scudder, and that's helping to bring the awareness. Sunny's our mascot that will travel around to different schools, so we're looking for locations for Sunny the Sea Turtle as well, and Sunny is, um, if you want to say some more yeah, about Asia, it. Asia Scudder is a wonderful angel that we have met recently. She is an ecologist, okay. but also an artist, so she went from ecology into art, and this is specifically to create awareness oh, so that's for your, the your plastic. Mascot so our mascot, your mascot is Sunny, a big so, sea turtle made uh, out of uh, wire. Okay. So a very big sea turtle, and she's generously gifted this Sunny. There'll be more to come to okay. us. So he's coming along with us, or she, kind of a neutral. It's just Sunny, the sea turtle. Well, on that note, we've got to end. We're, we're, we're out of time. But I'd like to uh, thank my guests, Nathan and Kari Gray. And we've been talking about uh, eco bricks and their endeavor to uh, clean up the landscape and provide affordable housing through through this wonderful project. Well, thank you, folks, yeah, for thank you, so thank you for having us. Thanks, uh, really and I'd like to remind our viewers um, that uh, you've been watching North Shore Journal. I'm your host, Walt Kosmowski, and we'll see you next time.